Did you know that CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control? CNC machining can achieve highly precise results, with tolerances often reaching a thousandth of an inch or better, depending on your machine. That's some next level precision, and this Onefinity Journeyman has a maximum cutting area of 48 by 32 inches. And today, I'm using that power to carve an epic world map featuring a sailing ship into this 24 by 16 inch cherry panel. Will it turn out as clean as I'm hoping, or am I about to ruin this perfectly good cherry panel? Let's find out. All right, let's get serious though. In order to pull this off, I'm gonna be generating the tool paths using Carveco Maker Plus. I'm gonna send them down from my upstairs computer, upload them onto the CNC controller, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. I have my model width 24 inches, height 16 inches. Go ahead and click OK on that. Go ahead and import your 3D model. In this case, I have the sailing ship with the world map in the background. It's a pretty cool border around it. Uh, so we're going to need to manipulate this a little bit. Go ahead and click on center. Now my workpiece downstairs is only 24 by 16, so I want to make sure this fits. Thickness is only around 0 0.75. So we'll go ahead and unlink Z. Z size is going to be 0. Five. Okay, go ahead and apply that. You'll see that shrinks it down. X, go ahead and change this to 24. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this a little bit more so that way we have room to play with when we go to do the uh, profile cut. Click on apply, recenter, zoom in. And now we're gonna go ahead and click on paste. This is gonna be really simple. We're just gonna draw a vector around uh, what we have pasted down here and then we're going to run a relief carve tool path and get this thing going. So the best way to get a vector around this right here is to create a new vector. So go up here, vector, create. We're going to create a relief boundary. Now this is going to create multiple vectors within the model. So all I'm going to do is delete uh, the ones that I don't want. Go ahead and click on create boundary. Um, you can see it created all of those. Click on the outside boundary only. You're going to go ahead and copy that, control C, and now select all of the vectors and delete them. And now paste the vector that you just copied. And you have here only the outline left. Now the bit that I'm going to be using to cut this out is going to be a quarter inch Jenny. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and offset this vector by 0 0.125, which is half of a quarter inch. Using the offset vector tool, I can go ahead and set this up. 0.125 outwards to the right. Um, go ahead and delete original vectors because I'm going to be using the one that is the result of this, not the one that was before. So I can click on offset there. And you can see I have a really nice outline around my 3D model. Okay, easy enough. So now I'll go ahead and click on create machine relief toolpath. Um, we're going to go ahead and select vectors. Inside the vector finishing options, we're going to use our 16th inch skinny Jenny. Uh, roughing options, we're going to use our quarter inch any compression bit. It's going to be about an hour and a half on the roughing and it's going to be about 12 and a half hours on the finishing. Um, so define the material. I have a 0 0.735 piece of wood downstairs. Gone OK. Calculate now. OK, I have a pretty high end PC and that took mine about 45 seconds. Um, as you can see, we have a machine relief tool path here with both the roughing and the finishing paths. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a Profile tool path around that offset vector that I had. We're going to go, go ahead and run it along the inside. I'm going to be using a quarter inch Jenny for that. Go ahead and calculate that one. I'll be using painter's tape and hot glue to secure the piece so I'm not worried about creating bridges in this profile path. All right, so I have all my paths now. I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, sent downstairs. The last thing I'm going to do here is create a simulation tool path just to make sure I have everything right. So click on tool paths and then simulate all tool paths, simulate. And this is going to be our projected outcome. So this is exactly what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and send these tool paths downstairs and we'll get it started. So as with any carving that you're gonna be doing on a CNC machine, it's super important that you tie down your workpiece correctly. For this project, I'm gonna be using painter's tape and hot glue. Basically what happens is I tape the bottom of the board, tape the hot glue goes on top of the waste board, and then this goes sandwiches down right on top of that. It actually does a really good job of folding it left and right up and down. For this carve, I'll be using a 1 16th inch skinny Jenny bit and the 1 quarter inch Jenny bit. 
I find that a one quarter inch end mill works very well for the roughing pass and the 16th inch works very well for the finishing pass. I'm gonna provide both a time lapse of the roughing pass and also a time lapse of the finishing pass. The roughing pass is going to have my dust collection system running so that way I can attempt to keep the shop a little bit clean around here. The finishing pass I'm not gonna have dust collection on so that way we can see the full result at the time of carving. I tried to make a wooden car with my CNC one time, but it wouldn't start. I guess it just wouldn't go. I've been using these sanding mops that I got from Amazon for a couple of years now. These do a really good job of getting all the fuzzies off of the really fine details that we've carved in here. Okay, I've got the majority of the fuzzies off. It's time to take it off. Sometimes you really got to get in there with the uh, with the tweezers to get some of these fuzzies out. I'm gonna drop a quarter inch round over on the back side of this, so that way we can keep the front and the back looking about the same. All right, now it's time to burn it. Not with this though. We're gonna burn it using this 24 watt JTEC Quad Pro. Take about five minutes. A 
Okay, so that's it for all of the CNC work. This is what we've got. It's approximately 24 by 16. We're gonna go ahead and apply finishing techniques to really get this thing popping. So I'm gonna be using a couple of different things here. First, I'm gonna hit it with tried and true Danish oil. And then I'm going to allow that to dry for several days. Once the Danish oil has dried completely, I'm going to be using a 50-50 mix of shellac and denatured alcohol. This will cut the shellac down so that way it doesn't have a super bright, glossy finish. And also I'll be able to sand it several times. Wow, that tried and true really does incredible work there. Very good, very good. Time to burn it. Just kidding. You actually want to keep fire as far away from these items as possible. This is now completely dried, so we can go ahead and coat it with the shellac. And there we have it, a 3D sailing ship. This is approximately 24 by 16. I hit it with three coats of that shellac sanding in between each time. You can really see how the shellac brought out all that detail in the 3D carving here. Made it look super nice. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create this 3D carving of a sailing ship into this piece of cherry wood. The woodworking world thrives on creativity and it's awesome to see more people getting involved through CNC woodworking and general woodworking techniques. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tune into my next video where I show you how to incorporate this carving into a functional item. Thanks.